Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about yet another problem with the dark matter. The unusual, ubiquitous and omnipresent substance, thing, particle, we don't really know what it is, but it seems to be everywhere. But the new problem the scientists recently discovered seems to make it even more unexplainable than previously. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but first of all, Okay, well, a lot of people don't seem to believe dark matter exists or believe that something else can explain it in some way. And so naturally I wanted to start with a brief explanation why we kind of do believe that it's real and there is really very little reason to doubt it. First of all, the dark matter itself was essentially discovered when looking at the so-called galaxy curves or galaxy rotation curves as you see right here. If you look really closely, the galaxy on the left uh, seems to have slightly slower spinning stars in it whereas the galaxy on the right has stars moving a little bit faster. As a matter of fact, the motion of stars in a galaxy on the left is explained with the regular Newtonian physics. In other words, it's using exactly the same physics as what we use in the solar system to explain the motions of planets around a star. But the galaxy on the right has stars moving in a very different fashion, with the actual motion being somewhat similar to what you would expect from, for example, some sort of a spinning disk, like the one you see here, where all of the points do move with a relatively similar velocity. Now naturally, we wouldn't really expect matter to move in such a way in the universe, but turns out that it does, and turns out that pretty much every galaxy we've seen so far is closer to what you see on the right, not to what you see on the left. This was a huge surprise when it was discovered by the brilliant Vera Rubin, who you see on the left, with the famous astronaut John Glenn on the right, although honestly they could have probably taken a better picture of them, unless she actually fell asleep during their conversation. Now unfortunately she passed away in 2016, which is ironically is the same year that John Glenn passed away, but nevertheless her legacy and her discovery of dark matter live on, and she has a new telescope named after her because of all of the original discoveries she made and also because she never really managed to win a Nobel Prize, even though many people wanted her to be nominated for it for many decades. But the thing is, there are other ways for us to explain the galactic curves or the galactic velocity curves, and there have been many attempts, including the most famous attempt using MOND or modified Newtonian dynamics that tries to recalculate and redefine how we calculate the idea of gravity. Essentially, it modifies gravity itself. But there are obviously other ways for us to see dark matter, and one of these ways is the very typical Einsteinian effect known as gravitational lensing. And in this case, it's not the gravitational lensing you see here from a black hole, it's the one from galaxies themselves. Specifically, the effects usually created by tremendously large galactic clusters that possess tremendous amounts of the invisible, mysterious dark matter inside of them. And unfortunately, there is no other theory, including of course Mon that I just mentioned, that can explain any of this. The only explanation is that something invisible seems to exist inside of these galaxies and is causing these tremendously powerful gravitational effects. And so the assumption that dark matter is there and that it's causing these effects has always been there. And because we sort of have a general idea of what it should be doing to matter around us, various computer simulations have been made over the past years, including this right here that you see, this is known as Illustris Project, that try to recreate the modern universe using these simulations and using the math and physics that we understand from dark matter. Now all of these simulations seem to do a relatively good job at creating the universe we see, which, by the way, you can also explore yourself by using the Illustrious Project Explorer page and by essentially looking at the dark matter generation and the creation of various stars and galaxies as imagined by the supercomputer. And well, in a nutshell, they do produce a relatively accurate picture of the universe, including the mysterious cosmic web that seems to connect everything in the universe and seems to possess a lot of the dark matter particles on the inside. However, this is where we get to the new study, and actually several new studies, that seem to discover something that doesn't really make sense. For example, the most recent release of the KIDS survey or Kilo Degree survey that essentially analyzed the universe around us, discovered that certain parts of the universe and certain clumps in those parts seem to be about 10% thinner in terms of the amount of dark matter in them than it should be. In other words, it was more homogeneous and didn't possess the exactly same amount of density as what we usually create in these super simulations in Illustris or other projects. Now, this is not really a big difference just yet. However, there were other studies, 
specifically most recent studies by using Hubble telescope that focused on studying specific clusters of galaxies, very massive clusters that possess a tremendous amount of mass in general. And the paper that, as always, you can find in the description below, pretty much discovered almost the opposite of what was discovered by the previous surveys. And although it doesn't actually contradict the findings of the universe being a little bit thinner, it does contradict those findings when it comes to a very specific clusters. They seem to have discovered at least three galactic clusters that seem to be much, much thicker in dark matter than they should be, about 10 times thicker. In other words, the gravitational lenses produced by these three specific clusters were like 10 times more powerful than they should be. And that of course only means that there is a lot more dark matter present in them and a lot more overall mass. Because we cannot see this mass, it can only be dark matter. At least that's the current assumption. The scientists behind this paper actually warned that, well, we hope that this is not some kind of a new mystery, some kind of a new dark something that we are actually discovering here, because hopefully this can be explained with current theories of physics. The last thing we need right now is another mysterious dark blank, dark something. And actually, as you can imagine, these ideas already exist out there. They're not really theories yet, but there have been propositions suggesting that there might be another some sort of a particle or energy that causes the universe to act slightly different from what we imagined. But I guess the question here is, how do we know that this is dark matter after all? Well, it's all really based on our understandings of how gravitational lensing works. Today, we're pretty certain we know how to figure out how much mass there is between a bright object and some sort of a mass in front of it. In this case, the gravitational lensing techniques have improved so much that we can usually recreate an object that's even causing these effects or that's behind the gravitational lens. And at this point, we can normally calculate the mass of this object that's causing the lens to an extremely accurate amount. And so when looking at these gravitational lensing clusters and when trying to combine the total mass of the cluster, the scientists did discover that there was about 10 times more of mass than there should be, at least based on the observations of the visible matter in this cluster. And here's what this looks like with the visual light and the dark matter in blue that's being slowly introduced into this picture. This is essentially one of these clusters. This one is known as Max J1206, and it's recently been kind of trending in the astrophysical community simply because of these discoveries. But here is essentially the composite image of all of these three major clusters, each of them possessing way, way more dark matter than we anticipated or believed was possible. And the most interesting part is actually shown right here. This is what's known as the nested lenses and are produced by the immensely dense concentration of dark matter present in each of these individual galaxies that sort of act like a typical collection of lenses Although in this case, they're arranged in very different ways, and so the actual lensing effect, despite being very powerful, is not particularly useful at looking at objects behind them. And because today we can usually estimate the amount of mass and dark matter present in a galaxy by essentially looking at the total amount of light in it, the scientists were then able to calculate the mass of visible matter and compare it to the actual lens itself, and it turns out that it just doesn't add up. There's a huge amount of dark matter that's distributed here invisibly and across a much, much larger area, which is essentially what you're looking at here in this other image. And although to some extent, of course, this all makes sense because a more sort of dense and a more massive cluster is going to attract even more dark matter in it. And objects like, for example, galactic voids where there's nothing are going to have almost nothing in them. It still doesn't really explain to us why is it that these specific clusters are so much more dense and why is it that the majority of the universe seems to be much thinner in the amount of mass and amount of dark matter present in the cosmic web. Now, one possible solution that could be solved by, I guess, MOND or similar theories is that maybe the gravitational influence is actually a little bit weaker than we thought and so it doesn't really make the universe clump as much. Now, this obviously means that a few formulas have to be reworked once again, and this will obviously upset a lot of physicists, but at this point, we actually have no good answer for what's happening and why this is so. Other explanations involve an introduction of a completely different concept known as dark radiation, so once again, dark something that we know nothing about, but in this case, this dark radiation doesn't explain everything, so another particle needs to be added into the equation. So yeah, we're basically kind of back to having more mysteries and more unusual effects and more unexplained phenomena. 
which actually means that there are still so many more mysteries to solve and so much more to discover. And this is of course the good thing. This means that I have so many more videos to make for you. And on that note, well that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. The papers are as always in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now. And either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye. Which actually gives me an idea, maybe I should rename this channel into What the Universe? Meaning that, you know, there seems to be so many different things happening and it always makes us think that everything is dark, unknown to us.